Hi, welcome to Art with Anorak. I'm Daisy Rogers and I'm the founder of the West Hampshire School of Art. And if you joined us last week, you'll know that we have been looking at drawing the lovely animals of the Anorak world. And last week we started with a hedgehog. Today we're going to be looking at the kissing badgers. So you might be able to see them here on this lovely tablecloth. And uh, we're going to, as we did last week with a hedgehog, we're going to break the quite complex shapes of a badger down into actually very simple shapes. And then we're going to start building up some detail around that. So that really helps it feel less confusing and much more approachable. So grab a pencil, grab some paper, and let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to think about the placement on our page. Now I've gone for quite a big piece of paper here because I want to do two badges and they're going to be facing each other for a little kiss in the middle. So I know that I'm gonna need enough space for two badges. Now a good thing to do, first of all, is to think about where the middle of your paper is. So I'm just going to use my pencil and by eye, I'm just gonna say that I think on a light little cross there, it's called a crosshair, a light little crosshair in the middle there to show me that that's the middle of my paper. So I know that one of my badges is going to be on this side and the other badger is going to be on this side. Now which side should we start with first? That's the question. I think let's start over here first and then we can copy in mirror image, that's when it's flipped the other way around, a badger over here. So <clears throat> our badges are going to be broken down into three circles. They're going to start off quite small and then get bigger as it goes from the face, from the head of the badger, through the body of the badger. Now, what I want to do is because I want my badgers to be kissing, I'm going to make sure that there's a little space. I'm going to have a mark here where I know that the, my noses of my badger are going to be. And then I'm going to give myself what about that much space, about a, a finger width space. And then I'm going to do my first circle. Now remember, these are just guidelines. They're just here to help us break down the outline of the badger. So don't worry if it's a bit wiggly or if it doesn't look very round. We're just going to press very lightly with our pencil to give us those guidelines because we're probably going to rub out most of it later. So I've drawn a little circle here, which is going to form the majority of my badger's head. And then next to it, leaving a little gap between, I'm going to draw a little bit squiggly there. See what I mean? <laughs> but it doesn't matter. I'm just going to draw a circle there. And then next to that, again, leaving a tiny gap, I'm going to draw a slightly bigger circle again. Now you're probably much better at drawing circles than I am. I'm drawing at a slight angle, so they've gone a bit wiggly, but that's, as I said, it's really not a problem. Okay, so we've got our three circles on that side. Now what I want to do is put the three circles on the other side as well, so that then we can start making sure that we are matching one side to the other. Okay, so if I turn that towards the camera a bit more, you'll be able to see. So again, I've got my finger width difference, a uh, distance, sorry, between where my nose of my badger is going to go. And I'm going to draw my first circle, my little circle for the badger's head. And I'm going to have a quick look to see whether it looks suitably similar. That'll do. And then we're going to go on to the next circle. Which is going to look something like that. And then our final circle, slightly bigger still. Gosh, my circles are all over the place today. There we go. They are very, very wiggly. Okay, so whoop, the next thing we're going to do is look at starting our outline. So what I want to do is start with the nose. Now, a badger's nose is quite sloped, like we had with our hedgehog last week, but our hedgehog had a nice sort of ski slope off the bottom. Our badger is, is pointing downwards a lot more. So we're going to do a line like that. 
and then it's going to go up again like that. Now I'm just having a quick look because earlier I did some other sketches to help me remember all the different bits that I want to show you for the badger. In fact, I can show you, look. So you can see the little badgers there. This is what we're aiming for, but we're gonna go bigger. And, uh, and here I've got a mummy badger in more traditional badger colors. And then I did a little, a little baby badger in some crazy bright colors. So that's what I'm using as my reference, as a guide again, to help me remember where the placement of all the features are. So I know that I'm going to be going up here. It's gonna dip down and then it's gonna come up again. And then a badger's got a nice big hump at the middle there. Dips down again for its, its back of it, uh, the middle of its back and then up to the top. So it's sort of like a wavy line. And it's gonna come round. Now what we're gonna do is start thinking about the tail. So about, so here's halfway down our circle, about a third of our way down. So if we split the length of our circle, if we split that into three bits, that would be a third, the first bit. So we're gonna start our tail there. And again, remember, just press really lightly. We're just going to come off with just some really nice little feathery shapes. And then just under the halfway mark, we're gonna do the same to join the tail. There we go, okay, so it's a little bushy tail. It's quite, uh, quite rough at the moment, but that's fine. Now let's do the same on the other side. So we've got some symmetry. So we're gonna go, remember we did a little line up from the nose, then it went steeper again. Then it curved over the top, dipped down and came up again, dipped down and came up again. And then we came around the back of the back of the bigger circle and about a third of the way down, we looked at the tail and just under half of the way down, we did the bottom bit of the tail. Okay, now, the next thing we're going to look at is where the uh, where all the feet and the legs of the badger are going to go. So when we looked at our hedgehog last week, they had really tiny little paws. Badgers have got slightly longer paws and, and legs, not as long as a horse, but probably a sort of medium sized dog, maybe somewhere between a spaniel and a Labrador. So that's the kind of leg length that we're looking for. So enough that we can see the different joints in the leg but not so much that we, it feels really tall like a polar bear. It's much shorter than that, closer to the ground. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna find my point where my tail ends there, and I'm going to do, this is where you don't need to start, you don't need to keep following the circle line now. So I'm going to do a, just a pretty much a straight diagonal line down to here. So about the same, about finger width, either side of the, where the line crosses the circle. And then we're just gonna do a little line there. Now for the moment, that's all we're going to do. So that's just giving us the outline of the leg. We're gonna do the same on this side. Now, what I am going to do, and you can use a ruler, you can use whatever you like to do this. Now I can see that because I'm drawing at an angle, my one of my bad badgers is really high up in the air and the other is much lower down. So we'll have to pretend that this badger is up on a rock or something like that, but that's fine. That's where our imagination comes in. Now I'm going to use, I'm just using this line here to think about where the paws are gonna sit on the ground. So this helps think, um, this helps us create a much more realistic context for our badger and makes the illusion of depth, of something being three dimensional. So I've got a faint line that I'm gonna run across there. And that's where the, the, the near side paws, that's the paws that are closest to us of this badger here, where they're going to sit. So if my back paw is gonna sit there, I know that when it comes to drawing my front paw in a similar way, I'm just going to look at my drawing for 
reference. And there we go, we can see that all there. Okay, so now this one, this little badger, up in the air. Now this is a really important lesson when it comes to art, is that if it goes wrong, just make the most of it. Create another story, create a way of bringing that error, that thing you did wrong, into your drawing and have a laugh about it. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's art is enjoyable and it's there for you to express yourself and not to take it too seriously. So don't worry at all. Now, I'm going to go back to my nose because I want to start thinking about the rest of the shape of my face. So we've got our two near side legs, the legs that are closest to us on this side of the badger. And now we're going to think about where the nose is going to go. We've got our, our lovely, in fact, this is going to come out a little bit more like that. Probably the nose could go a little bit closer. And then I'm just having a look at my drawing. And I'm thinking that there's a slightly sloped line here, which is where the mouth of the badger is going to be. But it, uh, it doesn't want to be too sloped, so it's almost, almost um, horizontal, almost straight like that, a uh, flat line, but just a tiny little slope down. And then I'm thinking about this line, which again is going to be slightly sloping, but not too much. Now. I want you to stop that line in between these two circles. You know, remember that little gap we left between the circles? If you were to draw a, a light line going down between that gap, that's where that line is going to stop. That's come from the nose, created the mouth and come down the neck of the badger. Because, now the reason for that is because that is going to give us our guideline, our, our, a mark there where we're going to start the front leg that's at the other side of the badger, okay? So now, we did a little line for the, for the near side paws. We're gonna do a similar line, just very faint, for the far side. So that those paws are sitting on the same line as each other. And again, that just helps create a much more realistic feel of our badger and it gives it that depth that we're looking for. Okay, so let's have another quick look at my drawing. Now we're going to start actually drawing some paws. So we've got our point here from the neck. We're going to extend that down a little and then we're going to go down slightly towards the other badger with that slant. And then it's going to come around here to the paw to sit there. And then that will join up in there. Okay, let's go back to the front leg of the badger, the near side leg. Now what I want you to do is think about that line that we drew, that little faint line, that guideline we drew in between the two circles that helped us understand where to start drawing that front rear paw from. Um, we're going to let me just see where about. So, yeah, about there. It's going to come off that line, just skim the edge of the circle, and it's going to come down again, tilting a little bit towards that badger, and then round. Okay, so we can start to see there, hopefully, you can start to see that we've got two quite realistic legs. I think we should give the rest of the legs to the badger. So first of all, what I want to do is draw, draw his tummy. So we're going to draw the line that joins up to the back, back of his legs there. So it's just going to skim from one circle to the base of the next circle. And then we're going to think about where that goes down. Similar thing to what we did with the front legs down, slight slanted one, uh, slanted line going from top left, top left to bottom right, and then coming round. Now, if you haven't used that trick before, it's a really useful thing. When you're drawing angles, and particularly when you're trying to copy something, 
or when you're trying to, like we're going to be doing, creating mirror image. So you want to make sure that it looks as much the same as it can do. What I'm doing is with my pencil, I'm actually just checking that my angles, so for example, I can go to my drawing here and I can check that, right, which way is that line going? Because sometimes our brains make us think that a line's going a completely different way and it can get quite confusing. So it's always nice to check. So I, uh, I can line my pencil up with that line from the rear paw up to his tail to see which way it's going. And I can see that it's a slanted line going from top left downwards to bottom right. And then I can check that on my drawing here. And there we go, top left to bottom right. So I've just double checked that my angle is correct. And then what we're going to do is just put in his other rear paw. Now remember the paws behind are going to be smaller, aren't they? Because they're further away. So let's not draw them too big. There we go. Right, let's do the finishing touches to this badger before we then replicate over to finish this other one. And then we'll start thinking about our shading. Now, this is a longer tutorial than we did last week. If you want to, press pause now, go and have a drink, maybe a quick snack, healthy snack, and step away from your drawing and then come back to it once you've had a little break. And you can press play again and catch up where, where we left off. This is really useful, particularly when you've been drawing for ages and you're looking at your drawing and thinking, oh, it's, it's just not working and I'm not quite sure why. And having a break gives you a fresh eye, a fresh perspective on your drawing when you come back to it. So let's carry on. So the last thing that I'm going to do to this badger for the moment, I'm going to pop in his eye, which I'm going to do down here, there. And then I'm going to think about his ears. So do you remember that little dip that we did? Off the top of the first circle, we dipped down before we went up again for that next hump of uh, over the middle circle. That's where we're going to put his, uh, his ear that's the other side of that badger. Okay, so there we are. I'm going to go like that. Then we're going to use the faint outline of our smallest circle to help us with, it's going to be slightly bigger ear, remember, because it's going to be nearer, to help us with the ear that's this side. So I've used that curve of the circle to help me know where to start and end that ear. Okay. So there we have our main outline of our badger. Now let me show you what I mean about now rubbing out the guidelines. So what I'm going to do is make sure I'm not rubbing out the outlines, the lines we want to keep. But you can see how, as I start to rub out those faint circles that we did at the beginning, it starts to feel much more like a real badger. Now we can always we can always go back and tweak little angles if we want to. So for example, I might look at my drawing that I did earlier and say, actually, you know what? I want this to be flatter along here and then scoop up a little bit there. And I want this to be a bit higher and then come a little bit more, a little bit flatter through there. And then I might make his tummy a little bit lower to the ground. Great. Okay. I'm happy enough with that badger. So let's get on with finishing this one. And then we can start doing the fun stuff. The shading and the colouring in. Brilliant. So remembering what we did before, we worked out where our nose was going to be close to the centre of the picture. Now bearing in mind that my badger, if you remember this badger, is slightly higher up. So I'm just going to turn this towards me a little bit just to make sure that I get these angles right for you. So we're going to just tweak that face there. I want that to be a little bit flatter there. Coming down. OK, 
Okay, let's look at these rear paws. So I'm using my guidelines, I'm using the guidelines of my circles to help me to find where everything's going to go. And remember how we did with this badger, we looked at creating that faint line where the badger's paws are going to sit. I'm going to do the same with this one. So I'm going to create my faint lines where the near side paws, the paws on this side of the badger are going to be, and then a little faint line above it where the rear, the far side paws, the paws on the other side of the badger are going to be. So then I can have a look at what I've done for my other badger. And that circle doesn't need to be quite so big. So this is where you mustn't be afraid to change things if you don't feel like it's quite right. Sometimes there's a, it's really tempting because we've done so much work to something. It's really tempting just to keep going, even though you know it's not right. Now that's absolutely fine, you can do that. But what I really would urge you to do is if you feel like, if you have like a, an instinct that something's not right with your drawing, take a break, come back and look at it and don't be afraid to change it. So now, now it's interesting because I'm left-handed. I find the badger on the left-hand side much easier. You might find the badger on the right-hand side much easier if you're right-handed. Be interesting to know. So when you post your, your pictures, when your parents tag them with uh, hashtag Anorak Adventures, maybe put in the comments, how did you find it? Did you find it easy? Did you find it hard? Did you find one badger harder than the other? Be really interested to know. Right, let's get this tummy in. Okay. And then we want this. This leg here. Going down to this line. Again, using our circle to help us. And we're going to go back to the leg, uh, to the nose here. We're going to think about that badger's face. So we had that straight line coming slightly slanted down, but mostly straight for his mouth. And then coming down again a little bit there, sloping down slightly. Remember that, that, that imaginary, that tiny faint guideline that we drew for ourselves between those two circles. And we're going to stop that line there. And then that's going to help us know where we want this badge report to go. Okay, good. Great. Okay, so let's put in the eye. Put in the ears. So remember one ear, slightly smaller than the other, is going to go in the dip between the first hump and the second hump. And then the second ear is going to be the bigger one. And we're going to use that first circle we drew to, to help us start our ear and then end it back on the circle outline. Great. Now I'm going to draw an imaginary rock here. <laughs> for our badger to stand on. <laughs> Maybe he's on a little hill. Or he's in a dip down. Perfect. And we can always think about the context, the environment that those badgers are in. So maybe you want to do some little tufts of grass coming up and around the badger's paws. Maybe you want to start thinking about a forest in the background. If you're starting to think about drawing trees in the background, if you joined me for the hedgehog last week, you'll remember we talked about something called proportion, how big something is in relation to something else near it. So if you draw a tree, make sure that you're thinking about how wide that tree is compared to how wide a badger is. So really, it depends on how big the tree is that you want to draw. But I might think about doing a nice big tree like this. 
and it's just going to tuck down behind the hill there with some nice roots. I love a tree with roots. I always think of the faraway tree. If you've read the faraway tree, you'll know what I mean. If you haven't, ask your parents to look up Enid Blyton's The Faraway Tree books. They're just magical. And it's about a wonderful, wonderful old, old tree in the woods that a load of fairies and pixies and elves and other creatures live in and the magical adventures that they have with some children from, uh, from a nearby house. And uh, I always think of these trees and think of all the magic that could happen on them. So, that's our tree in the background there. Oh, this is exciting. A little story is appearing. Great. Okay, I think we're ready to move on to some colour and some shading. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do one badger, like we did, like I did here in this drawing here. We're going to do one badger in more traditional shading. And then we're going to look at what you could do, fun things you could do with the other badger. Now, of course, you can do whatever you like. You can do as many versions of this as you like. You can make them camouflage badges. You could do rainbow badges. They could be on a bright background of a bold colour like this lovely tablecloth. So really go to town with your imagination. Think about that context as well, that environment your badger is going to live in and where you want them to go. Do you want them to be... Uh, what kind of season do you want it to be? Do you want them to be small? Do you want them to be big? So have a think about that before you start drawing, or you can just start drawing and see where it takes you, either or. Right, let's start with the colouring. So I've got here a charcoal pencil. Now you can use a black pencil, you can use a piece of charcoal if you've got one, doesn't matter at all. And we're gonna have a look at the colouring around our badger's face. Now you can see here, we've got a lovely, lovely black stripe of fur that goes up from just below the badger's nose, up around its eye and tucks behind that ear before feathering out. Now this is a really recognisable uh, trait of our badgers, so we want to make sure that we've got that in there. So now I'm going to use this badger here for my black and white badger. So I'm just using my pencil to create my line, feathering up around his ear and then curve back around. Okay, now we can just shade that in. Don't worry if the eye suddenly disappears, we can always go over that with a little hint of white to catch the light in his eye. And your ear is just going to tuck him there because that's going to stay white. Now, the great thing is if you're using white paper, you've already got some white here. Don't feel like you need to go over it. But if you've got some lovely pastels or some chalk, you can do. You can always do some nice smudging. So uh, whichever you prefer. Great. Now, what I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at the shading underneath his chin coming down his legs. His legs are much darker, same as the stripe across his face. And then the same as this one. Okay. And then we'll do the same with the rear legs. Great. Just tapping the paper there to get some of the dust off. Now we're also just going to make sure that underneath his tummy is dark. Now the reason we're doing that is two things. One, because badgers often have darker fur underneath their tummies, but also because that will probably be darker in terms of where the light is falling on our badger. So it's probably going to be lighter on the top of our badger and darker underneath. And the same with his tail, where it's joining his body, that might be a little bit darker than the rest of the tail. 
Now we're going to look next at something called a salt and pepper type of colour. Now this is where you have a mix of black and grey and white hairs and it creates a lovely sort of mottled effect. So we can see that here in this drawing. You can see the lovely contrast between the black stripes there and the black legs and then this grey sort of mottled tone of the body and then his whiter face. So this gives a feeling of the fur and badgers, badgers have got quite coarse fur, they're quite sort of uh, it's not very soft, it, it would be quite hard and rough to touch. So we can start thinking about where that's going to start. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my charcoal pencil. I'm not pressing too hard, I'm pressing quite lightly and I'm just doing, I don't know if you can see there, hopefully I'm doing lots of lovely little, almost like little flicks. I'm just holding my pencil slightly further down and I'm just flicking my, I was about to say my brush, feels like a brush, flicking my pencil like that. And this starts to give us that feeling of fur. And then what I'm doing here is I'm going around the area that I know I want to keep white. So if we go back to this badger here, we can see this area here that we want to keep white and I've just feathered around it with my salt and pepper badger fur. I'm gonna carry on doing that around his body. Be slightly darker as it comes in to join the legs. Maybe slightly lighter at the top of the badger for where that light's going to fall on him. And then coming down the tail as well. And there. Great. I'm happy with that. Lovely. Okay, so now what I want to do is I am just going to find, where have I put it? Here we are. Now here I've got a chalk pencil. You could just use normal chalk, you could use white paint, you can use whatever you like. But I'm just going to use this to just redefine some of the bits that I want to be white. And also just to fill in some of the body to give me that salt and peppery finish. So maybe where between the black lines where you've still got some white paper, that's a good place to use. And make sure just check your pencil as you're going or your chalk, that it's not picking up too much of the black. You can always give it a little wipe if it is. So we're just adding a little bit more texture and depth our badger. Great. Okay. And let's just give him his eye back. So I'm going to use another white altogether. I'm just going to give him and get it to show up over the pencil. It's going to give him a little eye. Nice and open there. Great. Oh, and I forgot to give his nice little Snuffly nose. Mustn't forget that. And his little smile. Make sure that's nice and defined. These are definitely happy badges. Great. Okay, now what are we going to do for our next badger? Well, if I can find it. I have got, of course I've put it down and now I can't find it. I've got a wonderful box here of soft pastels. Now these come in all kinds of colours. You can use oil pastels, you can use soft pastels, paint, tissue paper, colouring pencils, felt tips, whatever you like. As you can see, there it's like a rainbow box of colour. And so I'm going to think about something called complementary colours. Now, if you've been to one of my art workshops, you will probably have heard that, te that term before. If you haven't, you might have heard it at school. If you haven't heard it at school and you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry at all. 
All it means is it's a pair of colours, it's two colours, and they're like the best friends of colours. So they're two colours that bring out the best in each other and they really pop on the page, they really stand out and look really effective. I want to use a nice bright blue and the complementary colour for blue is orange. So I'm going to find nice bright orange here. Now, if you want to use other complementary colour pairs, so you've got blue and orange, that's one pair, purple and yellow are another pair, and red and green are the third pair. So that gives you an idea of uh, using your primary and secondary colours. If you don't know what I mean, don't worry. You can always um, ask me on a comment or look it up with your parents online. But using your primary and secondary colours, those are the three pairs of complementary colours. So let's get going with our blue. Now I want to use, I'm going to use my blue in place of my black that we did on the other side. Now because my pastels are very soft, I don't need to press too hard. And I'm going to come round, same as we did before, round the ear, back, down, round the eye to join where it came off the face, just below the nose. And then we're just going to block that in. Now with soft pastels, you don't need to press, push too hard because they're so soft and chalky that you can just press lightly and then use your finger or if you've got a special paper stump, you can just blend it yourself. Then we're going to go back to what we were thinking about before, where we had the darker under the neck, dark little legs, multicoloured blue legs. Okay, under the tummy a little bit, this paw, and this paw at the back. And then we just had a little bit off the top of the, top of the top of the tail, didn't we? Okay, now let's think about our salt and pepper finish. So again, remembering that light touch, those little feathery lines that we were looking for, leaving some white space, making sure that we've got the white where we want it for the face. I'm just going to create that feeling. Do you know what I'm actually going to do? I'm going to change my mind slightly. I'm going to pick up another blue. In fact, just because I love this blue so much. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? It reminds me of the sea in the Mediterranean, which considering we're probably not going to get to the Mediterranean this summer, is a wonderful, bright, happy colour to use. And actually, I'm going to use that lighter blue instead of my salt and pepper because I think it'll stand out in a really effective, bold way and really make this. Again, just tap your paper. If you're using pastels, resist the temptation to blow the dust because it can get into the air and then into your lungs and make you cough. So always best just to, with clean fingers, not these ones, just to tap the paper like that. Great, look at that, that's looking fun, isn't it? Now we go back to our orange. I remember we're gonna use our orange where we used white. Look how bold that is. Isn't that brilliant? I mean, there's gonna be no missing this badger. This is like the best high-vis badger ever. I think he would probably even glow in the dark, which to be honest, isn't the best for this badger because he's meant to be a camouflage badger. That's why badgers are black and white. It's nature's natural camouflage, which is so clever because badgers are nocturnal. Do you know what nocturnal means? It means that they come out at night and during the day they like to sleep. So they're black and white because all the colour in the nighttime fades, doesn't it? You can't see all those vibrant colours of the daytime and it just feels like it's black and grey. And so that's where the badger blends so nicely in to his surroundings. Great. 
Now I might just make a few little marks, maybe where the light is going to fall over the top here. And then where his little ears are. Oh, we need his eye, don't we? I keep forgetting these poor badgers. I'm not getting any eyes. Okay, so I'm just going to use a really light little pastel just to give him a little eye there and this badger a little eye there. In fact, it's such a lovely white. It's a really creamy white that I'm going to use it just to brighten up this badger over here a little. Great. So there we see different ways of approaching our badgers and we've got two lovely kissing badgers saying hello to each other and having a little chat and then we've started to think about where they live, giving some context to where they're uh, meeting, the surroundings around them, starting to build that story. Next week we're going to be looking at another anorak animal. We will move on to a rabbit so we're going to look at a lovely springtime animal and we're going to really create a lovely background for it as well. So make sure next week you've got your colours at hand and we're going to really use our imaginations. In the meantime, get creative. Make sure your parents tag your, pa uh, your pictures, your paintings, all your creations, either on Facebook or Instagram or both with hashtag Anorak Adventures and we can see all of your lovely pictures and I can't wait to see what you've created. Join me next week. Take care. Bye.